All right, I had multiple comments. I was reading that they wanted to see the clutch repair on this. So, uh, first thing to do, I guess Joe said it wouldn't adjust up anymore. It was out of adjustment. Um, so, um, I noticed when I started it the other day when it was cold and the clutch was released, but the main box was in gear and the Ford reverse was in gear and it took off going forward on me with the clutch release. So there's something, you know, not releasing right in that clutch. It's okay, so, you know, the grease cleaned off. I where all that's coming from. back of the block or something interesting Let's see what condition that clutch brake shoes in yeah we gotta get the old blower nozzle and even up here get a bunch of this shit blown off of it that way when we open her up then they'll fall down in there I could have probably pulled these deck plates and drove it back outside, but I'm not going to do that because I drove it in on some 2x6s and all the boards to not tear up the floor, so it's just a pain in the ass getting your board set right and everything. And let me get a blower nozzle and blow that shit off of there. socket if I don't have to pull the clutch I surely don't want to but <coughs> Joe's probably right Joe's been around these things for shitty probably 30 40 years <laughs> I think he knows when they're screwed up. Sure like working on wet clutches versus just a regular 
dry clutch. You're so much cleaner to deal with. You don't have to deal with all that clutch dust everywhere. And, I mean, I see thread sticking out there, so that's usually... Usually when you see that much thread, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's the clutch ring. The clutch ring will turn here. See all these threads sticking out? Uh, I'm just kind of wondering. I'm going to try to adjust it just to see. Uh, oh. I think it'll go in more because there's, like I said, there's threads sticking out of it. So that would be just absolutely spectacular if I didn't have to jerk this son of a bitch out of there because I don't really want to. So that's the first thing we're going to do is try to adjust it. Um, yeah. Let's kind of look at the motion here while I'm working the clutch back and forth. over really good there um i guess i'll try to adjust it first i mean right now it's pretty much an adjustment it's camming over good it's locking up we'll just see if it'll go anymore okay so uh, let's see, I don't need that, I need that. Oh. There's two locks on here. X and 9 sixteenths, and what I should have probably done. Yeah, that's not a very smart move there. Let's just use a socket. It'll be way easier than dealing with a hand wrench on that. Get this one loose. Okay, now we gotta you gotta make sure that you're <laughs> if you want to turn the clutch, what I'm gonna show you here, don't be leaning over on the clutch brake because you won't be able to turn it. I gotta go 180 degrees around to the other lock and loosen it up. Oh, come on. Let's place to pry on it. Ugh. It was turning fairly easy. All of a sudden, it's not turning very easy anymore. Another lock right there. There we go, right there. Shit the bed, Fred. I'm just seeing all them threads sticking out of there. I'm thinking there should be more adjustment there. Okay, so I tell you what I do, and I'll go get my air hammer. You'll see on these there's some little kind of like see these is where you hit it right here, right there. We used to get a punch and a long punch and a hammer and hit them too and spin them around. Let me go get an air hammer. Okay, let me climb back up in here. Let's see if she moves any. Yep, 
Joe was 100% correct. She will not adjust anymore. She's, that's all there is. Okay, well, he was right. He was not wrong. Let's go the other way. move that way either. Oh, you I don't know what's going on. There's something wrong with his clutch. It's not adjusting anymore. Something definitely wrong with his clutch. Something's wrong with it. Something's definitely wrong with that clutch. It's not, it won't adjust. So I guess I need to get it out of there. Dad gun, I didn't really want to do that, but it is what it is. You gotta, you gotta do it, so. Yeah. I'm going to try to get this thing out here this time without pulling that dash and all that shit. Because if you read the book, they tell you to pull the dash and all this stuff out of here. And then they tell you to hook, thread the thread the jacking screws into the clutch housing and then put a lifting eye on there. Well, they actually tell you in the old book there to use a chunk of wire and run it from hole to hole and pick it up like that. Well, I'm going to put lifting eyes right here and just try to use my chain hoist and just let it down on the ground and then drag it out from underneath it. That's that's my idea anyway. So I guess we'll go ahead and get the clutch brake off, pull the cotter pin, pull the linkage off for the clutch, and uh, pull the drive line on it. Okay, we'll order another clutch brake for this one too, so it's clear down into the rivets on it I think I think what happens on these fumigation caps you get really inexperienced operators and what they do is they're holding their hand they're holding their hand on that or putting their leg see the see all the see this right here that's where they're I bet you that's where they're putting their foot at because they're going through the field there and they just stick their foot on the son of a bitch and and they're basically riding the clutch brake all day long till they wear the clutch brake lining off of it. That's what happens. I've seen it happen quite a bit on these old cats. You watch the guy there, and you'll look at him, and you'll go, get your damn foot off that. What the hell's the matter with you? Then they go, what are you chewing my ass for? Because you're an idiot. Okay, let's see if we can pry this drive line out. I think I got all the bolts loose in it. Oops. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Barking spiders. <laughs> there we go. Yoke on the damn it. I just swore that yoke would go back on that transmission a little ways. <laughs> Miserable prick.
I gotta eat some lunch and then uh, drain the oil out of the clutch housing and start taking all the bolts loose. And something I noticed, let's climb under here, that I think we're going to do on this one is it's going to be more work, but I see, I think the rear structure is leaking between the block, between the block and the structure. See this where it's washed clean? I think that rear structure is leaking. Oh yeah, definitely. So the whole flywheel housing and everything needs to come off and be resealed while we got it apart, so. Alright. Yeah, what is that? That's like a... I remember it's like inch and a sixteenth or something, or inch and an eighth. Drain the oil out of that, and then start pulling all these bolts, put a couple forcing bolts in it, but we'll get a... get the old chain hoist out there, and rig up some lifting eyes there where that inspection plate hole is, and and hold it and we'll just let it down here on the ground and then just drag it out from underneath it okay let's dump the oil on this clutch I was <laughs> telling some buddies of mine to stop by we were sitting there bullshitting telling each other some jokes and <laughs> they'd never heard they'd never heard of some of them jokes i was telling some of them i can't i can't tell here because people would be offended but that's okay but Anyway, there's probably a couple that they wouldn't be offended. Eh, you never know. Some people get offended over everything. But, let's see here. What do we got? I'm trying to remember what size that is. Let's be inch and the 16th. Must be inch and 16th. It might be even dirty bastards. It's an eighth. Answer. Never fails, does it? Never fails. Telling these guys, I said, I was all serious, you know. And I, was, I says, you heard about that politician they found down there in the canals, in you between Klamath and Warden, there, didn't you? And he says, No, I didn't hear about it. What happened? And I said, Well, some of the bitch was down there and they found him in the canal. He's, I said, the reporter from the local news station went out there and, and asked the sheriff's department's coroner. He says, What happened here? And that coroner, he says, Well. Son of a gun had a 390 engine block tied to his neck, 47 gunshot wounds, and 59 stab wounds. It's the worst damn case of suicide we've ever seen. <laughs> oh, shit. Man, that son of a bitch is tight. I wish I could pull on it. I broke my other ratchet. Something they'll fix your ass. No. King Kong put that one on. I told I told those guys another joke, and this one here will probably offend somebody, but that's okay. Uh I told them I says, yeah. I said, there was a guy, he was on a business meeting, he went to a bar as at night there, you know business meeting was the next morning he was new to that town he was just in town for that meeting i said he he was down there at the bar there getting himself a drink and these uh guy these guys walk up to him and they say hey we noticed you're new in town we want to bet you something that three different things that no one's ever been able to achieve in here 
And he said, well, what's that? And he said, well, first thing is you see that big bouncer over there? And he goes, yeah. He says, you got to knock him out in one hit. He says, okay. There's this bouncer sitting over there. This dude's like 6'8", probably 320 pounds. Great big bastard, you know. And uh, he says, well, what's the second thing? He says, well, he says, well, we got a pit bull back there. That's the meanest damn dog you ever seen. He says, that dog kills everybody that it gets around. He says, it's got a sore tooth. You got to pull his tooth. Hmm, okay. Well, what's the third thing? He says, well, we got old Grandma Bessie back there. She's 92 years old, and she hasn't been with a man in probably 40 years, and you got to have sex with her. Huh. Well, let me think about it. So, he goes over there to the bar and has a few shots of whiskey and uh, and uh, gets to thinking about these things that these guys had proposed to him. Well, of course, you know, he has a few shots and gets some liquid courage. And I should have grabbed a three-quarter while I was under there, out there, I should say. Anyway, so he, he gets some liquid courage and he walks over there and he... He says, where's that bouncer at? And they said, well, he's right over there. Well, he goes over there and he uppercuts that bouncer with one good clean hit right in the chin there and just knocks him out colder and shit, you know. And he says, okay, what room's that dog in? Well, they lead him over there to the room where the dog's at, you know. And you hear the dog just, they put him in this room and this, this is going on for a good two hours. Just shit breaking and growling and snarling and screaming and after about two hours, he comes out of the room there, and he's just bloody and just beat to hell. And he goes, okay, where's that old lady need the tooth pulled? <laughs> anyway, they thought that was funny, so. I got a bunch of other jokes, but like I said, some people would probably really, really frown upon some of my other jokes. They're pretty graphic. Okay, so we got the drain plug out. It's pretty well drained already. There wasn't much oil in it anyhow. <laughs> Just let that thing drizzle for a while while we get the bolts out of this, I guess. Oh, my God. This one definitely needs cleaned up when we get it out. It is filthy. Filthy, filthy, filthy. Somebody's had it apart. Anna seized all these bolts real good. bright setting because it eats the battery up pretty fast. Yeah, it's really packed in here, the grease is. Can't even get the damn socket in there. Well, okay, guys. Well, let's see here. I'm let loose in here. Be interesting to see what's going on with this thing when we get it out. Why it won't adjust anymore? It won't go backwards, or it won't back off either. Well, I think the clutch discs themselves. There's nothing wrong with them. It's the actual clutch that's screwed up. And I kind of see a problem with the clutch, but we'll look at that here in a little bit. I want to pull the, the disc out of it and see what we got here. Because we got to pull this whole thing off anyway, because it's leaking where it mounts to the block. You can see the clean trail of oil back here. So that means it's leaking between where it mounts to the block and where the, and it's more than likely engine oil. Yeah, it's engine oil because it's not going to go past the seal and go back out. It's got to be engine oil. Let's see here. Should 
put a screwdriver or something under here with me. I didn't think about it. I don't know. Is there some wear on these or what? I see kind of a discoloration type thing there, but not sure what that's all about. good to me. Uh, intermediate plate here. Forgot. Yeah, you can take this out too. But I don't know if we need to do that or not. I can dig this one out of there. Well, I guess I'm going to end up pulling it out anyway. But I'm just trying to just do the quickest thing here for now. Get the... There she goes. This inner disc got some wear on it, but still doesn't, you know, when the clutch won't back off, you know that it's the actual clutch is the problem. Okay, let's, what do we got here? I mean, this one side has got some discoloration to it, but I mean, I mean, I wouldn't be afraid at all. To probably reuse both of them, but we'll probably change them while we're here. And let's get out and look at the clutch. That's the most important part. That's what's... That's where the problem lies, is it within the clutch. And we still got to support the engine. Which... Well, you know, it'll. I guess it could sit down right on top of the hard bar. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. You could probably put a jack under there somewhere and support it a little bit and then get these bolts out of the top here. Get this heavy ass flywheel out of here. Man, fuckers are heavy. But that D7 I worked on years ago, right in these splines right here, it had gunk and shit all built up in there. And also on that one too, it had worn grooves in this these spines and we got another flywheel for that one and uh and that solved the problem on that one but this one looks really good though not a bunch of shit in the spines but you rotate this drive gear around here and then knock the tabs down pull these three five sixteenths bolts right here pull those out and then you can get to your flywheel i mean you can get to your flywheel bolts like that too you can go from one to one which you can't really get on this one see because the lock tab here is interfering with the head of the bolt on the flywheel so you got to get them out and pull this gear out of there let's see what's going on with this clutch okay so you know what's going on see where the rollers are where the flow out bearing goes in and out see these grooves it's worn in that plate i think that's exactly what's going on it's worn grooves in this plate and so this clutch ring spins right well it's it's hanging up in these grooves that it's worn into it so we got to tear this clutch apart how do we do go about doing that how does that attach there maybe i'll go get to the book we know this gear needs to come off but we'll get the book i haven't torn one of these clutches apart see if we can fix this thing huh okay let's begin by that's probably not going to work for that. I should have grabbed a chisel. Maybe this will work. This one here. Not so easy. There we go. Damn, man. I'm a pain in the ass.
come off of there. Yeah, there should be a plate underneath, okay. Okay, now they want you to take these. Okay, these are just like a just like a retainer on a on a uh valve spring. I got a wrist pin spacing it out. go just a little bit more would be the ideal how about a magnet maybe, huh Get enough on it. Let me go one more notch with my little adjuster here. Oh, you dirty bastard! I had it. never fails. I think I really got it figured out, and that happens. This thing's tapered, I think. Yeah, it's tapered, so it's going to go a certain way. So it's, yeah, it's going to go like that to shove. It's going to go like that to shove them up in the lock. Make sure do not lose these retainers. Don't want to lose that shit. Very important. Okay. See if I can get lucky. It's kind of a, a juggling act here, so bear with me. It's not very easy to get this lined up and get it where I want it, but it can and will be done. Where's that magnet at? I thought I had it. She's over a little bit too far. She's partially in a bind or something and not wanting to release the retainers on it. There they go. Man, I've got that thing compressed about all the way, too. Oh, I see. That pin will come up a little bit. Man. That's kind of tricky, you know what? We'll get her, though. We'll get her. see what's happening see that pin is recessed into that plate back there so you're not pushing against the pin so the pin falls down just a little ways that's what the deal is okay now that I figured that out that's a lot easier I'm determined to drop that on my foot Okay, one more, one more, one more. Now that I know that, I think going back together shouldn't be too bad.
This one's all the way up, so. She's kind of in a bind here for some reason. This is one of those, when you go back together, there'll be lots of cuss words, lots of cuss words. Let's see here, I'm having trouble with this one retainer here. Just rotate the pin to the sloppy side here. Okay, so what step am I missing here? So take the... Sanders lock springs from the four studs. Install a two half inch by na National Course Ford eye bolts and bracket. Weight 65 pounds. Remove bracket 21. Well, that's kind of what I was doing here, but I see. Okay. I got them off. <laughs> so, let's look at things here, guys. We've got parts and pieces falling out, but there's, there's what the problem is right there. See the grooves that this is worn in here, where that, that throw-out bearing goes back and forth on these rollers here. These rollers right here are the one causing that. These. You see how it's grooved that plate up? Boy, it's grooved it up bad. So when this thing adjusts, this clutch ring will spin. And it's going to put more tension, basically, on this plate once the clutch is applied. And those should just kind of spin on top of that when you're adjusting that clutch. Well, what they're doing is they're getting in them grooves and they're hanging up. And these are supposed to go down in here somehow that I'm kind of surprised all those fell out of there the way they did but... Let's see if we can figure this out and get it back together Oh, I see what happened. Should go like that. Yeah, okay. I got it. I got to get it like this. I see. Goes like that. And that'll go down in there. This should. Should do just like this one here, dude. Oh, you know what? It got turned. Ah, ah. I see now. I'll figure it out eventually. It goes in there like that. Just like that. Okay. Same thing on this one. That one's already on there. Can you see that? That gets turned up like this because this is going to rock forward on that one piece to cam it over. And I think I don't. I may not have that right. That's the way that thing should be, you know what? 
So those rollers got to hit that ring just like that. And that's the way it's got to go right there. Okay, so this one's wrong. Goes like that, you dumb bastard. Just like that. Turn this one, it's got to go flip it around. Missing one. One must have fell out. I can't believe them rollers put grooves in there like that's pretty wild, huh? Now, see if this. Okay, now I got all that back together. So, what it does when this moves in and out, that just moves these rollers, it kind of cams over and then it shoves this in to apply the clutch or to release it. Man, those are deep too. Oh, just take your grinder there and grind them flat. So, anyways, guys. There's the clutch. I'm going to get on the horn before cat closes. I'm going to find this part number. And it might it might even have a part number on here. Let's look at this real close. Does this part... I mean, there's a number right there, but that doesn't look like a cat number to me. 229-8219. That does not look like a cat part number. Oh, so basically, this piece is fine. We just need the center hub part, the part that we need. I see, I see. Yeah, Cat used to be pretty good about putting part numbers on stuff. Which I'm not seeing one on this. inspect the other side just that one number there that 229 8219 that's just usually it's got to be a casting number or something on it because cat part number will usually start with like a 1R or you know a, a number, then a letter, then four numbers or five numbers or something like that. So, I don't know. I'll get in the parts book here and see if I can find it real quick. Well, guys, um, that's the gist of that. I'm going to figure out how to support the engine. Then we're going to pull this rear structure off the back of the engine. We have to pull the flywheel out, pull that uh, drive gear out that's in the middle there. Pull that out of there and then unbolt that flywheel housing. I have to pull the starter out and uh, reseal that while we're here. I mean, because it's leaking, man. You can see the clean, fresh. It's got a clean streak of oil there. So, all right, guys. Thanks for watching.